Two weeks before the head of the Charles Regatta, the road to Boston runs through the Cleveland Rowing Foundation Boathouse. It's an early Saturday morning practice, about an hour before sunrise, for nearly two dozen members of the Western Reserve Rowing Association. Most people that try it think it's really awesome, and uh, you'll stick around for a couple of years or you'll get totally hooked and you'll be here the rest of your life spending all your free time. Ross Eccles is a member of Western Reserve's Masters Rowing Program, a group of about 50 adults who compete in regattas from Ontario to Tennessee. I have been on the Charles, I think maybe six times. Um, I've coached it probably 10 times. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to this one because this seems to be a pretty good group of guys. It seems like a, a pretty, pretty quick boat. The Masters program is for adults who have decided they want to compete more than recreationally. John pulling in nice and high. For Western Reserve, the men's Masters team will send two groups to row Boston's Charles River, a four-man and eight-man boat each with an average age that hits 50 plus. It's a hodgepodge of ages, yeah. Uh, I have individuals that are, I might, uh, 65 is the oldest individual in the, in the shell, all the way down to 34. The men's 50 plus eight that I have, the eight plus that's going uh, this year, I have high hopes for. Um, a great group of guys uh, working hard, they've been working hard for the past month straight. Uh, we're start, it's, our first year in this event, so they're hoping to really make a splash, I guess you could say. Kirk Lang is Western Reserve's head coach and the executive director of the Cleveland Rowing Foundation. At practice, he follows behind the boats in a launch, studying technique and calling out commands and corrections as each boat works to settle into a consistent stroke. In the eight, less than three minutes to go. In the four, less than a minute and a half to go. Both boats, three-quarter boat length separation. Rowing, I mean, in, in essence, it's the best team sport you're ever going to be a part of. Uh, there is no one key player like you can see in basketball, baseball, other sports. Really, all eight individuals have to be working um, directly together in order to really maximize boat speed, efficiency. Bodies remain tall. That's the good part of this sport to me is uh, no one no one can be the superstar and everybody has to do exactly the same thing and then you also have to get to the point where you have to trust seven other people in the boat. They're trying as hard as you are and then you have that personal commitment to them to, to put that effort out. Eccles and, uh, didn't get his I start in his rowing team. as a high school athlete or even as a form of exercise in his 20s. He fell in love with the sport nearly three decades ago at 38 years old. My wife and all of the wives joined a rowing team and, and I thought it was pretty cool when I saw it. I grew up on the water, I love the water. Um, but she's pretty much like, if you're going to do this, you have to find your own team. And there weren't too many men's teams at the time. So a couple years later, some friends invited me and said, we think you'd love this. And I had tried it once, and so I'm in. So I've, I've been in it 28 years now, something like that. Unlike traditional contact sports like football and basketball, rowing is a sport that transcends age. I think it's one of the sports that's really almost sort of out there, which a lot of people have seen in the Olympics or on TV, but they've never actually had, have had a chance either in high school or college to do themselves. A lot of the adults that we see coming into the sport now most likely have had children or grandchildren that have participated in, in high school or college. We also have a lot of parents that come down and drop their kids off and they go into their practice. So um, it's a great sport for the entire family to do. It's family that motivated Adrian Nino de Rivera Frost to enter the sport. At 34, he's the youngest member of Western Reserve's eight-man boat. His dad rode at Cornell in the 70s and passed his love for the sport down to his son. Really, I grew up in a boathouse, if you will. Um, my dad used to take me in a stroller. And, you know, my first medal is from 1987, and I coxed a boat. So as soon as I was able to swim, my dad put me in a boat as a coxswain. It's a sport that is correlated with great professional success and personal success. It just the discipline, the team, the teamwork, the lack of protagonism, and the servant leadership that it takes to make a, a boat go translate very well into having successful careers and successful families. Hey guys, let's work on the run now. Let's work on the run. The floor is just under the bridge above you. I, I really, really do love it. I I owe a lot to this sport. And in times in my life where I've been lonely or or things weren't going well at work or with relationships, like this thing saved my life. So it's really, it's really a wonderful thing.
In addition to the master's program, rowing in Cleveland is gaining traction among adults looking for a recreational pastime. This year I think is our largest year on record. There are probably around 800 adults. I can say for the adult program, uh, each year they usually cap out uh, within uh, hours actually of registration opening because it's grown to that popularity. While rowing's physical health benefits are well documented, Lang points to its impact as a stress reliever, as a motivator for adults. Really, it, you can just kind of let everything go and relax. Uh, you know, I'm here, this is a stress reliever, it's the end of my work day, but also at the same time, you know, I'm getting a good workout in with friends, with my team, and we're working together for one common goal. Maybe it's a regatta, maybe it's a race, or maybe it's just a workout so that we can go out with our friends afterwards for a beer. It also provides for a unique view of the city, combining Cleveland's industrial past with its developing future. It's an amazing city, and I think it's like dramatically underrated. And we, we really do get a glimpse, like a very close view of the recovery and renaissance of downtown Cleveland. It's really you're in utter, almost utter awe that, especially if you're a rower, you're rowing, you're three inches off the water, uh, you're getting a great workout in, and especially in Cleveland on the Cuyahoga, you're going right through the middle of the city. So not only can you go by and hear the Indians playing and the music playing, fireworks going off, uh, you can see the lights turning on for, throughout the city. You're going under four or five bridges, uh, low-hanging bridges <laughs> that are actually still in service. Okay, the floor is still in my view. They are just making the turn on West Third. That last walk back really helps you guys. It's an exciting place and a very interesting down. place to row. Uh, you go from where we're located, a park setting, through several industrial uh, and commercial areas throughout the, throughout the river, all the way up to what we talked about earlier, Nirvana. Nirvana, or sometimes called Narnia, is past Arsler Middle, where the water is calmer and less congested. And it's where rowers say they find the best water on the river. I was watching Russ at the boat, Gildana's at the boat. Russ at the boat, Gildana's at the boat. The Cuyahoga River's winding path through the city is perhaps one of the ways in which rowing in Cleveland is unique providing an awe-inspiring backdrop for early morning, afternoon, and evening practices. But it's also the rowers themselves and the community they take to the water that adds to the art. Take Eccles, for instance, who coaches at St. Ignatius High School. I started coaching about 20 years ago, so some of, the, some of the guys I'm rowing with right now are kids that I coached or people that I coached when I was younger. Uh, it is something you can do the rest of your life. I have a story I tell my, my kids that I coach that uh, I rode with a team out of Toronto and we went to the Masters World Championships one year and one of the guys on the team was complaining about how he had to race against the young guys and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you have to understand I'm 83 and I'm going to have to row against guys that are only 75 years old and I can't possibly beat them being 83. So, so yeah, you can stay with it for a very, very long time. Three high schools, including St. Ignatius, three colleges, and Western Reserve's adult programs row out of the Cleveland Rowing Foundation Boathouse, making for a bustling community during peak practice hours. When I look at my team, since I coach the adults, I looked at my Charles 8 this year, and all eight of them are coaches. So really, it's a team atmosphere, even within the boathouse. The Cleveland Rowing Foundation has almost doubled in size over the past five years, thanks to growing interest in the sport. Hey, put on your seat. Here. Put on your seat belt. And the city now has a second boathouse, the Foundry, open on the Cuyahoga. Rowing hasn't stopped growing in Cleveland, and I don't think it will for the, uh, for the time being. What we like to say is if we can get you on the water, we hooked you for life. And Eccles has some advice for adults looking to pick up an oar for the first time. We can teach you how to row in, in 25 minutes' time then you can spend the rest of your life trying to get really, really good at it, but you can have fun with it in 25 minutes time.